Hi everybody, my name is Andy Vassar. I am the new senior technical instructor here at IP Expert, and I'm going to be focusing on the CCI collaboration track. Now I wanted to take a quick moment out to create this video and introduce you to myself a little bit, uh, just to get you an idea of what my background is and how I'm qualified to teach you. Um, also, I wanted to give you an overview of the collaboration lab and uh, the collaboration written exam. So, and how that has changed from the CCI voice to the CCI collaboration. So first, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've spent about 10 years in the networking industry uh, working on projects from web design, database development, uh, Cisco routing and switching, um, Cisco UC, uh, design, implementation, and optimization. Uh, so I spent the last six years working for Cisco, um, worked on a lot of different designs there, uh, worked with a lot of different types of collaboration products. Um, so I think that's going to really give me uh, kind of a boost in explaining some of this stuff uh, to our students. Uh, really, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of explain a technology without relating it to the real world. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do, and, and I think that'll help a lot in terms of understanding what the technology actually is. So while at Cisco, uh, I got my CCI routing and switching in 2008, and also I got my CCI voice in 2010. And recently that was updated, of course, to the CCI collaboration. So without further ado, um, and enough about me, let's talk about the CCI Collaboration Lab. Um, so what actually is going on with the CCI Collaboration and, and why did it change from the CCI Voice to the CCI Collaboration? Well, um, there are a lot of different reasons why that happened. And I think the number one reason is because the market has fundamentally shifted to what customers are actually deploying in their, in their networks now. I mean, it's not just voice anymore. It's, it's voice and video, voice and unified messaging, voice and uh, instant messaging. Um, so you're seeing a lot of these different uh, product offerings uh, in a lot of different places. So I think it made sense to go to, to the CCI collaboration. It wouldn't really be right to call it the CCI voice anymore, uh, being that you know, it's not just about voice. So that's one of the major reasons why I think that they, they changed the name and, and retired the CCI voice. Uh, for right now, uh, there are a lot of, lot of technologies on this exam that are going to be the same, uh, going to be the exact same. I mean, in fact, you're going to have uh, some core technologies here like call routing that is going to be the exact same. Of course, you're going to be routing video calls, which is no different than routing an audio call, uh, but you'll be routing those through the communications manager, which if you're studying for the CCI voice or were studying for the voice, you're intimately familiar with already. So. Let's get into some of the, uh, the things that were removed from the exam uh, and some of the things that were added from the exam. Uh, so first, let's talk about the written exam changes. Um, there, there was not a whole lot here that was done. I mean, they, they've removed DHCP snooping, they've removed OS hardening, and the common TCP and UDP ports. I mean, as if the common TCP and UDP ports have not been hammered into your brain relentlessly already. So you're not going to forget those. Um, but they've added quite a few topics, and they're really going to be testing on those quite a bit. I mean, first of all, virtualization in UC solutions, that's everywhere at this point. Uh, we're talking about, you know, VMware uh, on top of UCS or, you know, some type of third-party system. Um, so you have to have an understanding of what virtualization does. You know, that's, that's a, a huge part of it. IPv6, we're, we're seeing IPv6 introduced now, which is, which is a good thing. I mean, it's going to be... Um, we keep saying, you know, year, year after year, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be. Um, but it's still coming. Um, IPv6 is, is going to be huge, and obviously, you know, we're running out of address space and so forth. But I'll leave that to the routing and switching guys to discuss. Um, the next topic that they put on there is ILS and URI dialing. Um, that's a new feature in, in Communications Manager that allows you to basically use a string that's like an email address to call someone. Um, and there's a lot of different configurations associated with that that we'll get into uh, all the nitty-gritty of that uh, as we go further into the track. Um, SAF and CCD uh, call control discovery is basically what this is um, so, uh, on top of the service advertisement framework. Um, so it's, it's almost like a routing protocol when you think about it. It's built on top of a routing, routing protocol, in fact. Um, what you're trying to do there is, is basically exchange dial plan information um, in this new method. Uh, so they're going to be testing that, uh, testing you on that during the uh, written exam. Uh, the next one is MediaNet and also Cisco Jabber. Uh, Cisco Jabber is, is uh, your client, uh, your your client that you're going to be running as a soft phone or an instant messenger client. Also, you can integrate that with uh, Unity Connection, and there's a lot of other 
different type of video options you can do with Jabber as well. Um, so there are a lot of things to talk about there in the written exam for sure. Um, so just to summarize though, uh, they haven't removed a whole lot, but they've added quite a bit. So uh, let's move on to the lab exam changes. So finally, I mean, some of you people are out there rejoicing at this point because you do not have Gatekeeper on the exam anymore. Um, Gatekeeper was a staple of the exam. It was a frustration point for many CCI candidates out there. Um, I know for me it was. I, you know, when I first started my preparation for the CCI voice, I was just, just struggling with the Gatekeeper section mightily. Um, eventually got it figured out. But... <laughs> Um, the uh, T1 and E1 CAS is also removed from the lab exam, just basically because it's not used. These, these, both of these uh, technologies are not really uh, common too much anymore. I mean, you're seeing Gatekeeper replaced with things like uh, SME, uh, Session Manager Edition uh, Cluster, and also you're seeing them replaced with Cube and other, and other um, you know, um, border element type devices. Um, so the new lab exam topics now, uh, just like you saw in the written, you got, a, you got ILS and URI dialing, you have SAF and CCD, and Cisco Jabber. And those are all going to be testable topics in the lab exam. So not only do you have to know the theory, you have to know how to actually configure these things. Um, and definitely, once we get into the, the uh, boot camps and uh, the products, we're going to be hammering those subjects into your brain. Uh, so don't you worry about that. Um, so the next thing here, equipment changes. This is pretty interesting. Um, because you're going to see that a lot of these equipment changes are like for like. Um, you're going to have your, first of all, your MCS7845 servers. Those have now been replaced with UCSC series servers. Um, the UCSC series 460, in fact. And the difference between those, of course, is that one is going to be run exclusively um, in VMware. You know, you're going to have your ESXi hypervisor on top of your C series 460 server. And then you're going to have all your virtual machines running within that ESXi server to run your, your VM apps. Uh, before, we, you know, we're talking about 7845 bare metal servers where you're going to have your call manager, your presence server, uh, you know, uh, any other server, unit connection server, right on top of your 7845s. So that's not going to be like that anymore, of course. Um, so it's server for server. Not a whole lot of changes there, though, software-wise. I mean, we're just talking about the same software products, CUCM and CUCM, it's just a different server. So we don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, the Cisco ISR routers, you're going to get rid of the 3800 and 2800 series routers and replace them with the 3900 and 2900 series routers. Um, there are some differences there for sure. Um, number one, I mean, they're going to support the PVDM3s, uh, which is going to be a pretty significant difference here in the lab uh, that we'll have to talk about for sure. Um, so once again, though, you're replacing like for like. You're replacing router for router. Uh, VWIC cards, the same thing. VWIC 2s, replacing them with VWIC 3s. So it's not like you're adding a new foreign technology. You're just adding a different type of card, um, a, di a different revision of card. So I think that could ease some of the pain of this new lab exam, honestly, uh, because you're, you're going to be uh, talking about some things that are you know, somewhat familiar to you at the very least. Um, I mentioned the PVDM 2s and PVDM 3s. There are some different... Uh, things that we have to talk about with uh, DSP processing and, and some of the different types of bridges you can create or, or media resources you can create with those PVDMs. Um, also, you're going to see a slight change here in the, in the uh, ether switch modules that are in the routers. Um, so a little bit of difference there. And also your, uh, your Q module um, for Cisco Unity Express is going to be a little bit different. 3750 is just now the 3750X. And the two uh, changes that I have uh, in bold here are Cisco IP Phone 9971 and Cisco Jabber Client for Windows. Um, those are in bold because those are really only the those are the only two blatant objects that have been added as new equipment. The other ones are just basically upgrades of existing equipment that were already there. Um, so I think that could ease some of the pain um, of of this new blueprint, honestly. So let's talk now about the focus area breakdown of the exam. So you have the written exam, of course, and you have the lab exam. Uh, the written exam, I mean, you, you see the, the topics that we have here, Cisco Collaboration Infrastructure, Telephony Standards and Protocols, CUCM, iOS, UC Applications and Features, Quality Service, of course, Unity Connection, uh, UCCX, and IAM and Presence. 
Now the difference that you'll notice between these two is that there's no telephony standards and protocols on the lab exam. And you're, you're thinking, how can that possibly be? No telephony standards and protocols? Well, except that all the telephony standards and protocols are inherently tested within your lab. So it's basically that percentage has been dissolved into other areas. Um, it's actually been dissolved, it looks like, into the CUCM area, which kind of makes sense. So moral of the story, it's a pretty decent breakdown here. Um, but you'll notice the numbers between the written and lab exam. The written exam, you have 25% for uh, uh, CUCM and 20% for iOS and features. So that's 45% of your written exam is going to deal with those things. So if you're studying for the CCI voice already, that's something you're going to be intimately familiar with. So that's something that you, you may not need to, to touch as much. You may, you may want to focus more on, on the newer technologies. Um, there are some things in CUCM now, in 9, of course, that are newer, uh, like uh, you know, na native call queuing uh, you may want to touch on. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say you, you, you don't have to study anything at this point. I'm saying that uh, you know, a large chunk of your exam, uh, your written exam and your lab exam, is going to be something that you've already been studying for. Uh, your lab exam, in this case, 40% for CUCM and 25% for iOS UC applications and features. So 65% of your lab exam are going to be focused on technologies that were already on the CCI voice. So that's a pretty good thing when you think about that. I mean, you're studying for your CCI voice. I mean, you're a little bit disappointed because the blueprint changed. But fear not, because you still can use that knowledge that you've been using uh, towards the, the CCI collaboration lab exam. Of course, there are a couple different things that you have to learn. Uh, UCCX is a little different. Uh, I am in presence. Um, and then, I mean, you're, you're going to learn quality of service. I mean, you're going to learn uh, things for, for video. You're going to learn a lot more about SIP. Um, you know, I, and the Cisco collaboration infrastructure, I mean, you're talking about another, another section that's relatively close to the same. So, yes, there are definitely some new topics on the lab exam. Uh, but there are some familiar topics on there as well. So I think that there's a good balance, and I think that it's going to make, you know, you're studying a little bit, um, not easier, but it's going to give you a little bit of a boost if you're already studying for your voice. Um, so I think that that's something to definitely to consider um, when we're, we're talking about the lab exam and the written exam. So what is IP Expert's plan of attack for all of this? How do we plan to help you study? How do we plan to help get you better as an engineer? Well, the number one thing that we're going to do is, is create self-study project or products that are second to none in the industry. We're going to create a volume one workbook that is technology focused and that is going to go through every single piece of technology that's offered on this blueprint and we're going to hammer it. And we're going to hammer it into your brain until you can't take it anymore. Um, and once you understand that, once you go through the volume one technology, uh, and the workbook, you're going to be amazed at how much you, you know, at, you know, after going through all that pain and suffering of trying to figure out every specific technology. Um, once you make it through that volume one workbook, you're going to be ready to go to volume two, which is going to be mock labs, essentially. So you're going to be practicing your uh, CCIA lab strategy, uh, your CCIA uh, technologies that you've learned uh, from volume one, and you're going to directly apply that to some of these mock labs that you're going to go through. Of course, when you're working on these uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2 technologies, you're going to be talking about you know, trying, to, trying to get this on a rack somewhere, trying to get this on somewhere where you can practice. And that's where our rack rental comes into play as well. Uh, we've been working now for a while on developing the greatest racks uh, to practice your, your CCI configurations in the industry. Um, we're working on uh, testing them right now and getting the interface polished up and running. Um, so within a few weeks, that should be ready to roll and, and ready to, to rent out for those who are ready to take the, take the plunge. Um, the next step of our, our attack here on the CCI collaboration is going to be uh, the online written boot camp, which is going to be in June. I'm going to be going through that. Uh, everything will be online. Everything will be through this uh, HD ILT interface that I'm using right now. Uh, of course, there'll be a chat window. We can, we can discuss uh, what's going on in class. You can ask questions. It'll all be live, uh, very easy to use. Um, and then we're going to go through the, uh, the five-day instructor-led CCIE boot camp, um, which is basically another, another um, time where we're going to be hammering information into you. Um, we're going to go through uh, from front to back, uh, top to bottom, go through everything in, these, in the blueprint, 
Um, and it's, it's really, it's not meant to be all inclusive. It's meant to be uh, focused on some of the more difficult technologies, more, uh, some, of the, some of the technologies that are gonna be uh, harder to understand. Uh, so it's, it's better to go through those as a group and kind of figure those out together with an instructor leading the way. Um, and the, the next class here is the uh, five-day five day, uh, lab experience boot camp, the one-week lab experience boot camp. Um, and that basically is going to be uh, proctored mock labs. So I will act as a proctor and go around and, and answer questions as would a proctor. Um, and you're going to go ahead and take this eight-hour lab exam and see how you make out. So we'll, we'll do um, basically a, you know, a lab on one day, and then the next day we'll, we'll walk through it and just kind of make sure uh, that everything's understood and make sure everybody understands what, uh, what the problems were and what the solutions were. So um, the next thing here is the V lectures. Uh, there's going to be probably six to eight scheduled within the next couple weeks. Um, and we're going to be talking about short little topics on different parts of the exam. Um, you know, for example, like UCCX scripting. Uh, we'll talk about something like that maybe and, and something we can cover within like a 30 minute window. Um, we want to make sure that they're not too long. We don't want people getting bored and falling asleep on their keyboard. Uh, so uh, we'd, we'd like to, to keep them interesting and short and focused, and that way you can get something good out of them. Um, so I think really, you know, that's, that's the rundown of the, of the products here that IP Experts can offer for the CCI collaboration. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to working with you. Uh, very happy to be here, and I'm, I've made it my goal to help you pass your CCIE because I know how difficult it is to do. I've been through it myself. Uh, it definitely was, was challenging at times, definitely wanted to give up at times, uh, so I know how it feels. So if you ever are, in, are, are having trouble understanding something, just reach out to me. We're here to help. Definitely want to get you to pass your lab. So. With that said, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, have a nice day.